Hello there, Fable here, showcasing once again Quara Comp at Floor 9, Sparag, as well as showcasing Floor 10 first wave with the same comp. Funny enough, I managed to clear Floor 8 with 2 star, however, unfortunately, my Zele comp, but well, one unit died and I was like, okay, screw this, just clear and move on. I'll come back to it later. So now we're here, murdering the heck out of Clara's daddy. Ta-da! Okay, anyway, unlike Floor 8, which was honestly brutal with what I was working with, Floor 9 was actually pretty easy. For a moment, when I saw Sparog as the boss for Floor 9, my hopes and dreams were shattered by freaking PTSD of the God Hand, the Hand of Destiny. Actually, no, I'm joking, but anyway, my, fear, my, big, my biggest fear was of course Sparog's mechanics. He spawns a mechanical hand, which steals a random ally from your party. However, I think it takes the highest attack or damage dealer. I could be wrong here, but for this comp, because I am priori prioritizing Clara as my DPS, as well as my tank, she has a higher chance of being taken due to her self-taunt, plus March applying taunt to her. Luckily, I have two lightning units that can break the shield fairly quickly, leaving enough turns for three stars. For those running Natasha, however, instead of Bailu, you'll need to invest into Tinyu a bit more to break the shield as soon as possible, as the requirement to break is lightning, wind, or quantum weakness. Or you can just smash it with another DPS as, po as fast as possible, either works. But in this scenario, we can't because we're highly relying on Clara from the maximum tip potential in both survivability as well as damage unfortunately but as fast as you can break the shield the more chances of you clearing with the maximum stars right but other than that as you can see that this comp does a pretty good job dealing with sparag without much glaring issue the rest was simply if you have enough turns left over from wave one and overall investment in clara simple yeah but in the future i will be replacing bailu for an upcoming unit by the name of Vulcha which is an imaginary healer, however the difference between Bailu and Lorcha is that he offers some DPS potential while also providing sustain, which allows me to have another layer of damage due to the limitation of turns in Memory of Chaos, which means that every damage does count, even if it's just from, say, Lorcha, right? Moving into the first wave of floor 10, it's pretty self-explanatory, it's just basically them hit you and then Clara counters etc etc, so they're pretty squishy right? So there's not much here to say, we're gonna go right into the first, the second wave sorry, of floor 10 that becomes a little bit more problematic due to the fact that things are a little bit more tankier and they hit a little harder here on floor 10. But anyway, now that we're at floor 2, I mean stage 2 of floor 10, the thing you want to worry about is the elite mob, which is the middle dude with the big sword that does a lot of crazy things. You have to watch out for the, the mania that he applies, which makes him, or rather makes it do an AoE uh, damage. That's why you want to have power at the far left, so that way your, if your Tinian or your uh, March isn't fully geared out or decked out, they don't take the full brunt of the Mania AoE damage dealt, right? In this situation, that's why Clara is always to the far left, but because I got hit like here, unfortunate. But it's okay, I survived and I just heal everyone back up. Again, just be careful with the burn ticks. This is really important because if you let that tick stack, you will wipe. So just keep that in mind as you play out this entire thing. The issue with floor 10 is that because, like I said, things are a little tankier and they hit a little harder, 
it does take a lot of turns to try and do as much damage in a short amount of time with this comp but i think long term wise when when you do invest more into the comp it's less turns and you can still easily easily get to the last stage of the, of the boss fight so but yeah i think you get the idea for stage two so let's try head off to stage three of floor 10 which is the most difficult one for this team but still managed to clear it quite well so stage three these two are really annoying if you don't have Quenzer, just keep that in mind. Like I said, if you let the burn stack more and more, you will suffer the consequences of what's going on. And as you can tell, I only have about 34 turns left, which is not good because I do want to try and clear things within a reasonable amount of turns, which is roughly like 35 or even 36, to have enough turns for the boss for my second comp otherwise i won't be able to do a full three side clear here but it's okay this is just simply a showcase of clark's comp and as you can tell they're about to do their aoe damage so i'm just prepping for that getting things ready getting clara's alt ready and just hoping that they just strictly hit clara but unfortunately they're starting to apply the burns and it's going to add up and right now unfortunately my bylo did get five stacks of burn so i have to cleanse it otherwise she might not survive in the long term and same with tinian same with march like you can see that those burns are really hurting and that's what you have to be mindful of with when you do use march's cleanse if you want to give it to clara for a ton or you want to use it to cleanse say by lutinian or herself but for me i think because i have enough hp and sustainability from both by and tinian they can survive enough of the burn that I'm just going to use March's taunt on Clara just so that they can try hit Clara more often with their AoEs and Clara counters, right? That's basically the gist of my idea for this entire floor and the rest I'll just let it play out and you guys see for the rest of yourself. I'll, at the end of the video, I'll show the stats, etc. So these are the same stats as last video, nothing has changed since I when I did clear 9 and 10. I'm still of course crit farming, trying to get as much crit rate and crit damage on Clara as possible. 
and enough sustainability which is this is plenty of course but anyway she has her light cone you don't need it as i've said as i've mentioned in the prior video you can use any of these cones here except for maybe the mold welcomes you this is probably a good budget option or you can grab the one from hertha's shop the destruction cone and that also will work fine because it should offer you more base stats for her overall stat line yeah but anyway uh her traces is maxed her talent and her ultimates are maxed those are your priorities everything else these two specifically you don't have to but in this case for 9 and 10 you might want to consider it for that extra damage boost as every damage does count and of course everything else is max right her relics uh, for those wondering what my substats are like i said they're nothing special it's just crit rate crit damage as my try my priority focus as i am making her a damage dealer I'm trying to get as much of that as well as attack percentage if i can get it but it's really hard to get those but anyway yeah you can tell crit rate attack percentage hp that's perfect i just i'm missing crit damage of course but it's okay it's whatever sooner or later we'll replace this eventually for like this one that i have saved up and because blade's light cone is coming or well, blade is coming and i hope that his light cone does give you crit rate that way that way i can just replace this for this piece here right chest piece oh boy um chest piece i only i managed to get this one with crit rate as one of the uh the substats it did not roll into crit rate whatsoever not even once it just went into effect resistance just like back in good old effect seven days and effect effectiveness which is not ideal this would have been perfect if it had defense percentage crit rate attack percentage and hp percentage this will be ideal for clara but in this case it's not and it's unfortunate so it's there for now i do have a crit rate piece but again it did not roll into crit damage i'm not going to bother leveling it because it's just a waste of time so i'm just going to use this I, same thing <laughs> i can't i do have a crit damage boots right here as you can see um yeah it's probably gonna replace eventually but anyway nothing special uh this is perfect the substats that i am looking for for both tankiness as well as enough damage this is good enough i'm not gonna bother rolling anymore for it i just leave it as is and then her attack percentage uh chain thing it's again nothing special i haven't rolled into crit rate i want to roll into crit rate but it's so freaking hard to roll into it but yeah that's really it for her her relics if you were interested in her subsets idolins e0 and yeah that's really it about clara bailu tinyuan and marge bailu i decided to upgrade her a little bit more but she wasn't at this level when i did clear nine and was attempting 10 um so she still was just like in the prior video with similar stats right so like basically you got the idea right um and then tinyuan i again starting to invest her a little bit more these weren't the stats when i cleared nine and attempting ten as i said these are her up-to-date stats for now and most likely will continue to um level her up as much as i can for her relics as i said in a prior video just slap them wherever you can for this specific comp because this comp she does not need the full set of musketeer because at the end of the day especially if you're running brian's light cone you want her to be optimal with clara that way you give clara 35 percent more damage over bailu or uh march right and for bailu's light cone as i've said before you don't have to run this you can run any of these two here or any of these for more sustainability because that's the most important thing the attack damage that this offers is as small as you can think and is very very niche trust me you're really not going to see as much as you think you're going to see it at anyway so that's basically my tinian her idolins if you pull for genuine banner you can have e6 or e4 but you don't need any of them for the most part i showcased her with just at 10 to give you guys an idea if you don't have her at e6 right and it's doable right you just need to focus strictly on her attack to give as much damage to clara as possible and that's really it and also the survivability when you can as for march <laughs> same march i've not done anything to her just from like last video she has no investments barely enough investments her light cone is just her light cone uh, you don't have to use this if you don't have it you can use this you can use anything here really just give her something that keeps her alive 
that's all she's there for. She's not there doing anything crazy, it's just whatever, right? You can make her do some damage you want, that's really your preference, but Relic, again, does not matter. They're all just minimal substat, as you can tell. Like, it's just whatever, right? It's just whatever. And her Adolent, not important. At the end of the day, it's just this. You just want her to use this on Clara, and that's really all there is to it. So yeah, so that's basically the comp. Um, and yeah, that's really about it. For those wondering about Yu-Gi-Oh! regular content, I'm waiting on a new pack to drop to showcase the Bistial cards. I know they got hit quite early, unfortunately, which does suck, but it is what it is. I'll still showcase it in stuff like my Dragon Links, my Odd Eyes, maybe Pen Edition. We'll see how it goes there. It does function okay in that deck. We'll see, but because we're still in the tier meta, yes, they will most likely work in Pem Edition. Um, I also tried Brand Abyssius as well, just let me know what you want to see out of the three. Well, and I'll show this out first, and I'll just go down the list from there. But outside of Yu Gi Oh! content for Star Rail, I will showcase Silver Wolf E1 with this comp if you like. I'll most likely replace March for Silver Wolf just to show you her interaction in this comp, and then also her interaction in my other team, which is Zele. And then other than that, I think um, later today I will be streaming Diablo 4. If you're interested in watching, just drop by. I think around 9 p.m. Eastern or something is when I'll stream it. Maybe a little earlier, I don't know yet. But anyway, that is about it for the video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'll try my best to answer them. And take care, everybody. Bye.